Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Welcome to the Senior Resources Show of Colony. My name is Christine Carey and I'm the Director of the Town of Colony Senior Resources Department. With me today is Deborah Hyder, Case Worker of the Town of Colony Senior Resources. Thank you, Debbie, for joining me today. And thank you, Chris, for having me. Well, I'm glad you're here. Now, the Town of Colony Senior Resources Department, I know, is well known in the town. Can you tell me a little bit about the type of services that are provided through your department? Sure. Um, the Town of Colony Senior Resources Department started in 1979 and uh, we are basically an information and referral department um, but we also do outreach into the community and link the seniors up with the various services and programs that are out there. Well that certainly is critical that seniors know where they can turn to to get information and to get to referred to certain agencies to help them. Can you tell me a little bit about the types of referrals that you get, the calls that you get from seniors? Sure. Um, well, um, we do get a, receive a lot of phone calls from seniors, but we also receive uh, many phone calls from caregivers. Um, we also receive uh, referrals uh, from various agencies that are out there, such as uh, Colony EMS, um, Adult Protective, regarding seniors. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're your linkages, sometimes your eyes in the community of what's happening to the people in the town as they need more services, I would imagine. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So when a senior directly calls you, and asks for um, assistance in maybe they ask getting for many, uh, many different um, services. What is the range of things that you may get a request for on any given day? Um, well, uh, transportation. Um, sometimes they're looking for the Meals on Wheels number, mm -hmm. um, even for food pantries, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we. We receive uh, phone calls uh, and are asked questions that, you know, um, we may not have information available, but we, we always um, research and, mm -hmm. and help them, mm -hmm. either uh, provide them with another number where they can, you know, um, find that type of service or um, provide that type of information to them. Mm -hmm. So seniors are primarily looking for assistance in staying in their home or would, would you say that's the number one request that you get from seniors? I would, mm -hmm. I would, yes. Most seniors um, that I speak to, they want to remain in their own home. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very important to them. Mm -hmm. well, and uh, with, you know, many of our seniors today um, can remain in their homes with services in place. Are you seeing an increase in the number of services available and programs out there to help a senior to remain independent in the town? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And what, what types of, um, say a senior was living in their home alone and they were having difficulty um, maintaining their property. Say they called and said they couldn't maintain uh, snow removal or getting their windows washed or um, just uh, uh, someone to come in and do some light housekeeping. What would you say to that senior that called or that family member called looking for those services? Um, well, we do provide lists um, for like lawn service and home repair. And uh, there's also the ISEP program that's out there mm -hmm. um, for home care services. And, uh, you know, so they're able to, you know, uh, have that type of service. Mm -hmm. And the ISEP program, that's the program through Albany County that provides non-medical Ex home care? Yes, expanded okay. in-home services for the elderly. Okay, I yes. know that that's a critical program 
to assist seniors because it's done on a sliding scale. It's more affordable yes. home care, non-medical home care for seniors. I know that's very valuable. Absolutely. Now, as we help seniors to maintain physically in their home, as we watch the price of gas go up and the price of food go up and the price of prescription drugs, do you provide assistance to seniors who are maybe having a hard time stretching their social security or their pension check? What types, what types of services can you help somebody who's maybe um, can't pay their heating bill this month or doesn't have enough uh, income to pay for their prescription drugs? Um, once a month we do have what's called Benefit Assistance Day mm -hmm. and um, that is on the second Friday of every month. Uh, from 1.30 to 3.30, and Medicaid, uh, food stamps, and Social Security, and uh, the Qualified Medicare Savings Program. Um, they're able to come in and apply for those types of benefits, and also the Heating Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. And all these benefits help to stretch a senior citizen's income a little bit further. Correct. When you Correct. talk about the Medicare Savings Program, what does that provide a senior? That um, allows the senior to not have to pay for that Medicare Part B premium. Mm -hmm. Which is almost $100 a month. Yes, yeah. $96.40. And $96.40, mm -hmm. $96 we know seniors can put in, in many places. That's a lot of money to yeah, a senior. Absolutely, yes. and I know that that... And, and also the food stamp program uh, as of this year, now there is no resource limit. Mm -hmm. uh, to apply for that program, the mm -hmm. food program, mm -hmm. and it benefits many, many seniors out there. And what do you say to seniors that are reluctant to, pl to apply for food stamps because they may see it as an entitlement or a stigma attached to it? I know uh, there's coupons that used to be the way that the food stamps program was issued. Can you tell me how the program is run today? Right. No longer is are there coupons. It is... Um, like a, it's just a plastic card, like a, debit um, card. a debit card or a credit card, and um, they're able to go to the grocery store and uh, use it like a credit card or debit card and just punch in a four-digit PIN number and uh, no one has to know. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of card they're using. Mm, yeah, it could just be a bank card. Absolutely. Now, Absolutely. Do, um, now if a senior is ill or is homebound, can, can a home health aide or a family member use their benefit card to do their grocery shopping? As long as they have that four-digit PIN number. An authorization. Yes. Yeah, okay. an authorization. Yes. Okay. Because typically, you know, no one is supposed to have that PIN number but mm -hmm. them or mm -hmm. know that PIN number but them. Right, right. So... What would you say the average benefit, you know, would be for a senior? I'm sure it ranges, but what would you it, say if it does. someone were, is it worth somebody to, pl to apply? Absolutely, absolutely. And I know, I think the minimum amount is like $10, mm -hmm. but that $10 can, can buy a lot, you know, especially today. Mm -hmm. I mean, milk and uh, with the price of groceries today. Any bit, every little bit every helps little a bit helps. on a limited and, income. you know, once they're... Um, enrolled in the food program, um, it kind of opens the door to other services, mm -hmm. you know, such that as the heating assistance program mm -hmm. and possibly weatherization for their home. And mm -hmm. so, so it's there's kind of a conduit into other programs. Yes. Well, I know that food stamps for many seniors is a program they've been reluctant to apply for, but I understand that recently they've eliminated the resource cap. The resource cap. cap. Yes. So it makes more people eligible. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So, so looking at it as a nutrition program more so than a benefit program is the way seniors or their family members should approach food stamps, correct? Correct, okay. correct, okay. absolutely. Now you mentioned the HEAP program. Um, I've, I know many seniors have applied for it. Um, is that program still open because we're getting towards the end of the winter now? Yes, to my knowledge, um, it's going to go through till May 8th. May 8th, okay. Mm -hmm. And I understand it's a one-time heating benefit each year Correct. that a person can get? Yep, it's a one-time benefit that um, goes right to their fuel company, their fuel provider, Okay. whether it be National Grid or fuel company. Mm -hmm. And an idea of uh, what a, a yearly benefit might be that a senior might get, a ballpark? Um, I've heard 
the lowest, I mean, because even renters could apply for this oh, that's good to know. program. And um, so it could be $50 all the way up to, um, depending on if they apply for an emergency grant, too, mm -hmm. um, it could be $700. Well, that's true. You know, so that's a lot. That goes a long way. That that frees up money for other, other expenses that a senior may have. Absolutely. When we talk, when a senior meets with you on these different programs, obviously they're disclosing a lot of personal information. How? What do you say to a senior who's reluctant to tell you their income or disclose a, um, you know, a financial problem that they're having or a situation or the embarrassment maybe of having to you know, get some help with it, with some of their expenses where they've always been able to do it, you know, mm -hmm. on their own. How do you handle that with seniors? We try and provide a, a very safe environment um, when they come to our office. Everything, we tell them right up front that everything disclosed um, is strictly confidential. Mm -hmm. So everything and that stays usually within Yes, mm -hmm. that usually makes them feel more comfortable. Well, yeah, it would make me feel more comfortable, definitely. Now, when seniors come to you for help, where is your office located, and do you have the ability to, ability to go out and visit people who can't get into your office? Yes, we're, we're actually located at, at the Beltrone, within the Beltrone Living Center, mm -hmm. and that's on Six Winter Circle in mm -hmm. Colony, mm -hmm. um, off of Wolf Road. Okay. And uh, yes, if a, if a senior is homebound, we can go out into the community mm -hmm. and um, assist them with whatever their needs are. So regardless of whether it's in their home or in the office, you can provide the same level of service. Exactly, well, exactly. That, that's very good to know because many seniors are, are either homebound. living in, the home, in their homes longer and are becoming more homebound, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned um, that um, some of the other benefits and assistance that you provide, um, one was um, EPIC, the prescription drug program. Can you tell me a little bit about um, where they can get assistance with um, applying for EPIC or um, the Medicare D assistance? As many people know, the Medicare D prescription drug program has been complicated for seniors. Very complicated. And even some of the most astute seniors have difficulty picking a plan. How does the Senior Resources Department help uh, seniors find a plan and, and find what options are out there to best help meet their, their prescription drug needs? We welcome any senior to, to contact us and, you know, call up, make up, make an appointment and come in and, um, you know, we can meet with them and, uh, you know, uh, walk them through this complicated uh, system. Is there anything that they should bring with them when they come in if they want to meet with someone on their drug needs? On their needs? drug needs, yes. Um, if they could bring a list of their prescription drugs, that mm -hmm. would be very helpful. The starting point? The starting point, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And then we do have the EPIC applications there, so um, I always like to call our department a, a one-stop uh, place. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we welcome anyone to stop in and, you know, uh, ask any kind of question. Well, it seems that there's a variety of services and programs available for seniors. It's probably overwhelming when a senior or a caregiver begins. It is. Because very, there's just so much information out there. Very much so, yeah. Do you find that um, uh, seniors don't know where to begin? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And many seniors don't, are not aware of our department mm -hmm. and the various services and mm -hmm. programs. Mm -hmm that well, you, are out there. You said you, you talked in the beginning about outreach and outreach occurs probably in many ways. Um, can you tell me some of the things that you do to get the word out there to seniors about the services? Mm -hmm. Well, um, May 8th we're actually having a health fair. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be from 1 to 4 and mm -hmm. it's going to be over at the crossings mm -hmm. in Colony off of Albany Shaker Road mm -hmm. and uh, we're um, having uh, a lot of different screenings for seniors. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's really going to be open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, so caregivers, younger caregivers, families, anybody, anybody can attend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you sponsoring the health fair with um, any other agencies? Uh, yes, the Colony Town Nurse okay. is Zukaiser. also going to be very involved. Mm -hmm. 
with the health fair. And do seniors need to make reservations to come to the health fair, or can no, they? No, just, just come that day. <laughs> yeah, I often find that when seniors come to outreach events and health fairs, they may not need the information that day, but it's always, a, I think, a good idea to keep feeding the information to people, making it available. They may not have a health crisis or need a health care service at this point, but wetting people's um, appetite a little bit with what's out there and how to access it, I find is helpful. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. And then hopefully um, in the fall we're also going to um, have a um, caregivers uh, fair mm -hmm. and hopefully a one-stop session. Mm -hmm. um, and the one-stop session is uh, where um, different agencies would be invited and uh, such as Social Security, uh, Veterans Administration. Mm -hmm. um, so seniors can kind of shop under one. They can kind of shop under one, one event umbrella. and get information yes. on a lot of different services. Correct. Oh, uh, that those are very important programs. Now, where will that be located? Do you know where that will be held? Uh, the one-stop session. Mm -hmm. Probably at the crossings. Mm -hmm. Which is a lovely, it's beautiful lovely spot in the yes. town to have programs. I know. Yes. I know that. And I well. know we haven't had a health fair since 2005, so we're really looking forward to this health fair mm -hmm. coming up in May. Great. Now, will there be refreshments served? Because oh, absolutely. <laughs> very important. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Yes. And uh, hopefully the, the vendors will be, uh, you know, offering some giveaways. Mm -hmm. So will there be the, the, you said that there would be some screenings, uh, yes. the particular screenings that are popular among seniors that you will be offering are? Um, there will be a cholesterol screening, mm -hmm. and um, we're hoping for a bone density. Mm -hmm. um, an audiologist will be there, uh, an acupuncturist, a massage therapist, mm -hmm. um, diabetes screening, mm -hmm. uh, colon screening, colon cancer screening. Wow. Um, a lot of various uh, blood pressure screening. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Always have blood pressure screening, right, at Absolutely. almost every event? Absolutely. Well, it sounds like there's going to be a, a, a great deal of good information shared that day. And, and screenings are a good way for seniors to uh, see if they need to take this one step further to their doctor. It's a starting yes. point of, you know, pos a possible diagnosis or, or not. Absolutely. So that's terrific that you're providing that service. It's very important. Can you tell me about any other special programs that, um, that the Senior Resources Department provides? Um, there is a caregiver's support group mm -hmm. uh, that meets twice a month. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a transition support group that meets here at the library mm -hmm. once a month. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is for um, people who have had um, a recent loss or death. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice support group. Mm -hmm. uh, An opportunity, opportunity for peers for to come together. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so important. It's important as people get older, even more so, I think. Absolutely. As more seniors are dealing with more loss and more change in their life. Yes, and it, it you know... Um, it makes them feel they're not alone. Mm -hmm. well, that's important. Mm -hmm. That's definitely important. Um, for the fun things for seniors in the town, are there activities for seniors to socialize? What types of things Absolutely. does the town of Colony there's, provide? There's seven senior clubs within the town of Colony. Wow. Yes. And ma matter of fact, there's two that meet at the Beltron Living Center, mm -hmm. the Colony Senior uh, Center. Uh, social club mm -hmm. and uh, the heart social club mm -hmm. and the other clubs are dispersed around the town yes mm -hmm. yes and what types of activities do the clubs do um go on trips um play cards um there's bingo wood woodworking mm -hmm. um i know the lasha kill um senior club does some woodworking mm -hmm. um they play pool. Mm -hmm. um, Opportunities to socialize. Yes, absolutely. Right. Uh, because it is so important that seniors get out of their home and be with their peers and their friends. And especially in the winter months, those walls really start to close in on a senior. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, next month, we're starting a program called Lunch and Learn. Mm -hmm. 
and um, there's uh, what's called congregate meals mm -hmm. over at the Beltron Living Center, mm -hmm. and uh, so we're going to incorporate our benefit assistance day mm -hmm. with uh, the congregate meals, mm -hmm. and uh, so but we're going to have a guest speaker mm -hmm. come in once a month. Mm -hmm. um, so next month it will be uh, Candy Whitehead from Epic, okay. the Epic programming. Kind of give them some information. Um, but they're going to have lunch first and then attend the program mm -hmm. to kind of encourage them to get out there to uh, go to the congregate meal site mm -hmm. and have a nutritional meal. Mm -hmm. and Socialize a little Socialize, bit. Mm -hmm. yes. And then get some and learn information. Something. Yeah, lunch Absolutely. and learn. Makes sense. And, you know, they can also then sign up for some type of benefit. Right, right, because um, it's your benefit there. assistance day. And Correct. again, we like to stress that that is a confidential environment as well, Absolutely. even though it's, a, it's done in a congregate setting. It's individual meeting spaces when you meet with with workers individually. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, we talked a lot about seniors, but I know how difficult it is oftentimes for caregivers, for the loved ones, um, whether it be family or friends, that are, are helping a senior to remain in the community and remain independent. What type of assistance do you offer um, an adult caregiver who's looking for some help to keep, maybe keeping mom da and dad home? Um, I find talking with a caregiver on the phone is just listening to them mm -hmm. and listening to what their needs are. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times the caregiver just needs to vent mm -hmm. and, you know, tell their story mm -hmm. and feel like they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, then we, we go from there. Mm -hmm. And kind of look at what their needs are, what they're saying and not saying about the types of things. And then you can start to link them with the appropriate exactly. assistance out there. Mm -hmm. Do you find that many times caregivers don't even see themselves as caregivers? They just see that this is just an extension of being a spouse if you're caring for a spouse and oftentimes don't look at what they're doing as anything different than just being, you know, the person's spouse. They don't realize how much work goes into how much of themselves goes into caregiving. Yeah, most definitely. Most of our caregivers are so overwhelmed. Do you find that oftentimes it's a crisis that brings a senior citizen to, or a caregiver to call you, excuse me, or, you know? Yes, there's usually a situation mm -hmm. that prompts them to, to give us a call. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually um, their loved one is, is um, being resistant, mm -hmm. um, and that's where we're... Um, it's very um, instrumental for us then to be there for them, to assist them, because mm -hmm. um, we can usually go out there and meet with their loved one or just provide them with the information. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would imagine that sometimes the caregiver just knowing they can call and somebody else will do some of the things that are difficult for a caregiver to do, help their parents talk about, you know, needing more services, maybe is a difficult thing for a, an adult child to have that conversation um, with their parent about, but knowing that your caseworkers can assist with some of those types of things kind of pulls the adult child out of that situation a little bit. Exactly. Allows exactly. them to be the child yeah. and not the caregiver. Right. Mm, that's, and, that's really a benefit. And usually the, the loved one will take um, that this type of information better from, you know, the professional versus mm -hmm. the, the caregiver. Mm -hmm. Now, are the caregivers counseling and assistance that you provide, um, is that done on a conf in a confidential manner as well? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everything is confidential. Okay. Now, when, when you're dealing with um, um, caregivers, what oftentimes do you start? Do you see as the triggers that there's been a change in their parent's situation? Um, what kinds of things often prompt a, a caregiver or an adult child to call and look for help? Is it that they can't maintain in their house any longer, or they're not able to maintain their finances or cook? What types of things it could usually just be, raise a red flag? Yeah, it's usually just. Um, looking for some type of service mm -hmm. for them to remain in their home and mm -hmm. and um, kind of t 
take some of the burden off the caregiver, mm -hmm. such as, you know, cooking meals for them every day, you know, mm -hmm. Meals on Wheels mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. could be provided, mm -hmm. or even transportation mm -hmm. uh, to and from the doctors or to and from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, you know, usually relieve some of that burden mm -hmm. from the caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also respite. Uh, you know, um, there's Bright Horizons. Mm -hmm. The adult day the program. The adult day program. Mm -hmm. Which is a critical program to help uh, caregivers work and know that their parents are in a safe environment during the day. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell me, is transportation um, provided to uh, seniors if they want to go back, go to daycare during the day? Yes. Okay. Yes. Or to grocery shopping or a doctor's appointment. Okay. Now, when we talked a little bit about um, the caregiver services, you had mentioned the caregiver support group. Um, can you tell me when that is offered? Yes. Um, it is offered the second Tuesday uh, from that meets at night mm -hmm. from 7 to 8.30. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the third Tuesday of every month is um, from 10 to 11.30 mm -hmm. at the Beltrone Living Center. So there's a, a support group for those who are working during the day and then also those who are home during the day as well. Correct. Yeah, I find that peer support again, just like the transitions Transition group, support really group. helps um, people cope with the caregiving stresses. Can you, um, just in wrapping up here a little bit about, a little bit, can you, give me a little bit of information on how seniors can contact your department and um, where they can, you know, start to get information. Okay. As I said, um, we are located at the Beltrone Living Center mm -hmm. at Six Winter Circle mm -hmm. in Colony, um, and that's off of Wolf Road. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes it's a little difficult to find us, um, so I always encourage, you know, they can call us and ask for directions, and our number is 459-5051. Okay, all righty. And I imagine if a senior or a caregiver, or a caregiver. went on the Colony's, web, colony's website at uh, colony.org, they could provide, they could find information on your, on your services as well? Yes, absolutely. Okay, terrific. Well, I um, think this has been very, very informative today, and I hope that as seniors, um, you know, are looking at, what they need to remain independently, both as far as their health needs are, their financial needs, and maintaining in their home that they will um, access the services of the town of Colony. And I just want to remind everybody, too, about the health fair, you know, because we are quite excited about having it. Yeah, this and that, year. that date again is? Is May the 8th. And it's from 1 to 4 mm -hmm. over at the crossings mm -hmm. off of Albany Shaker Road. Okay. And then the Lunch and Learn series that you talked about, when will that be offered yes, again? Yes, that'll be next month. Um, I believe the date I'm, is April 11th? A April 11th, yes. The second Friday. The of second H5? Friday, yep. Okay. All right. To go along with the Benefit Assistance okay. Day. And that requires a reservation? Um, if they wanted to go to lunch, yes, they have to call a day ahead before noon time to order the lunch. To order the lunch. Okay, yep. all righty. But for the program itself and the benefit assistance to meet with an individual counselor, is is it necessary to have an appointment for that? Um, to apply for a particular program, such mm -hmm. as the Medicaid or the food stamps, mm -hmm. um, it's always good to call and mm -hmm. make a reserve. You know, make an appointment so that you have that individual. So time. you have that. Yes. Now, if a senior is just um, you know passing by or maybe has stopped in to join a art class or an activity in the center and they think that maybe they could use some assistance or want some information on, I don't know, um, yard work. Can they just stop into your office or Absolutely. do they have to have an appointment for that? Absolutely. We're open 830 to 430 Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. And the phone number again for the senior resources is? 459-5051. Okay. All righty. And there's always um, staff available there to meet individually? A, yes. Okay. Caseworker available. And when seniors call your department, are they are they linked right into your department, or are messages taken, or do they get to talk to somebody immediately when they call? Or um, caseworkers usually try and be available, mm -hmm. um, but it, it 
it's been very busy these mm -hmm. days. So, mm -hmm. um, but usually, um, if a message is left, usually the call is. Um, we try and return the phone call mm -hmm. that day or mm -hmm. the next morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you had mentioned that the health fair is a co-sponsored event with the Colony Town Nurse. If, they, if uh, seniors or caregivers wanted to get a hold of the town nurse, could they do it right by calling your department? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, because the uh, town nurse is actually located um, in the, within the Beltrone Living Center, too. Mm -hmm. um, but she's only there in the morning, and um, then in the afternoon she's out uh, into the community. Mm -hmm. So, um, doing home visits. Doing home visits. And are her services just for seniors or are they for anybody in the town? They're for anybody in the town of Colony. Mm -hmm. And is there a charge for the town nurse services at all? No, it's a free service. Okay. I imagine as a caseworker you work closely with the town nurse. We do. We do. Mm -hmm. We make a lot of referrals to the mm -hmm. town nurse. Her services help is to support very important. seniors. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. To live independently. Very good. Very good. And again, I just want to thank you for uh, joining me today and sharing this valuable information. I do hope as, you know, seniors and their caregivers find that they need, you know, assistance in, in, in remaining independently, because that is the focus of the Senior Resources Department, that they will, you know, reach out and, and, and give your office a call. Absolutely. At 459-5051. <laughs> Thank Very you, good. Debbie. Thank you, Chris, for having me. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next time on the Colony Senior Resources Show. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.